knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. We learned a lot about plants over in the botany series. Their structure, evolution, and the mechanisms by which they exchange energy, survive, and reproduce. But it will be worth our time to reiterate some of that information in the context of ecology. So let's do that now, starting with photosynthesis. Plants are autotrophs. This means they produce their own food. They do this using the process of photosynthesis to transform water, sunlight, and carbon dioxide into oxygen, which other organisms, like us humans, can breathe, and also simple sugars that the plant uses as fuel. It is these primary producers, plants, that form the base or foundation of an ecosystem and fuel the next trophic levels. Beyond making food, you may also wonder how it is that plants take water from the soil and move it around. Remember that water molecules tend to stick together, quite literally. Think about a straw. As you apply suction at the top, water molecules move towards your mouth. Because the molecules cling to each other on the sides of the straw, they stay together and flow into your mouth. The theory for how water moves through plants is called the cohesion tension theory. Let's start with the process of transpiration, the technical term for the evaporation of water from plants. As water evaporates through the stomata, or really any part of the plant exposed to air, it creates a negative pressure called tension in the leaves and tissues of the plant. The negative pressure exerts a pulling force on the water in the plant's tissues and draws the water upward, just like you draw water upward in the straw. Columns in the tissues of the plant get filled with water and those water molecules stick to one another through cohesion, like the water in the straw. Finally, there's capillary action at play as well. This is the movement of a liquid across a surface of a solid caused by adhesion between the two. When you place a glass tube in water, the water automatically moves up the sides of the tube because of adhesion, even before any sucking force is applied. In plants, adhesion forces water up the columns of cells in the tissues and then through tubes in the cell walls. In terms of the environment of the plant, heat, wind, and dry air can increase the rate of transpiration from a plant's leaves, causing water to move more quickly through the tissues. Sometimes the pull from the leaves is stronger than the weak electrical attractions among the water molecules, and the column of water can break, causing air bubbles to form in the tissues. If environmental conditions cause rapid water loss, plants can protect themselves by closing their stomata. However, after the stomata are closed, the plants no longer have access to carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, which shuts down the process of photosynthesis. Some plants, like those that live in deserts, most routinely juggle between the competing demands of getting carbon dioxide and not losing too much water. The leaves and stems of many desert plants thus have a thick, waxy covering. This waxy substance does not cover the stomata, but it covers most of the leaves, keeping the plants cooler and reducing loss from evaporation. Small leaves on desert plants also help reduce moisture loss during transpiration. Small leaves mean less evaporative surface area per leaf. In addition, a small leaf in the sun doesn't reach as high a temperature as a large leaf in the sun. Other desert adaptations shared by a number of plants include shallow, widespread roots to absorb a maximum of rainfall moisture, and spines or hairs to shade plants and break up drying winds across the leaf surface. We will be discussing plants in the context of entire communities of organisms quite a bit as we move forward through the series. For now, let's talk a bit about animals first. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.